Hey everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Today we will be studying about periods of occlusal development. So occlusal development it can be divided into four periods. First one we have is the pre-dental period, pre-dental period. The second one is the deciduous dentition period, deciduous dentition period. Third one is the mixed dentition period, mixed dentition period. So these are the uh, divisions that have been made on the basis of what tooth erupts. So this is for the kind of convenience and what landmarks and what, you know, milestones we are reaching. Okay. And then the permanent dentition period. Permanent. 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 So we have four periods of occlusal development. Pre-dental, the residuals, the mixed and the permanent. Okay. Now, first of all, we'll talk about the pre-dental period. Pre-dental period means our teeth has not erupted yet. Teeth has not erupted yet. It might be in the jaw. The development might have, you know, finished off, but the teeth has not erupted. So this is the pre-dental period. So it usually lasts for six months. That means from the birth of the child till he is six months old this period will last and this so what happens is actually after six months somewhere ranging from six months to nine months you have the central incise erupting so the this is the normal erupting time of the first deciduous teeth which is the central incisor central incisor the mandibular in, central incisor to be precise mandibular central incisor to be precise incisor okay so uh but the the it could range from six months to about nine months also so even if the child has his mandibular central incisor erupting at nine months that is kind of normal only okay so so what happens is here in the pre-dental period the thing we see is a gum pad so the child will have a gum pad so I'll quickly draw a gum pad here. I'm not a great artist, but I'll just try to make it look. It's not looking good at all. Okay, so I'm just drawing a gum pad quickly. Okay, so here we have a gum pad of a child. Okay, so you can see there are no teeth present. So I'll just take a different color. So, um, the alveolar process, so this is the alveolar process, okay? That is the alveolar process. So, at the time of the birth, they are known as the gum pads. They are known as the gum pads. And they are pink in color. And they are covered by a dense layer of fibrous periosteum. So, here you'll have a fibrous periosteum. And they are horseshoe shaped. So, our horseshoe shape is something like this. So, it resembles a horseshoe okay so that is why it's called a horseshoe shape and um we find here it has a labio buccal portion and a lingual portion okay and the two portions of gum pad are separated from each other by a groove by a groove and i'll just write it here that is called the dental groove dental groove and the gum pads are divided into 10 segments so if i have to divide the gum pad so these would be the segment I'm just roughly drawing i'm not even counting okay so uh, it is divided into 10 segments and these grooves these grooves are called as the transverse groove transverse grooves so each of these segments each one of these will have a developing deciduous tooth so that is why uh, since we it is divided into 10 portions in 10 so there will be 10 teeth in each arch so there will be 10 teeth in each arch that means total of 10 plus 10 is equal to 20 deciduous teeth in total right the canine and the first molar somewhere here i can say okay this is just you know a prediction by me <laughs> so here this transverse groove so here the transverse groove is called as the lateral sulcus so why did we name this groove something special why did we 
give it a special name the reason behind that is when you keep the upper jaw and the lower jaw of the child together you'll find this lateral sulcus here this kind of you know transverse groove and this basically it determines the inter arch relationship at a very young age inter arch relationship at a very young age so that is why we have named this transverse groove this transverse groove as a lateral sulcus okay now so here you can see the lateral sulcus in the mandibular arch i need i think i need to draw it a little more better so this is slightly lateral to the upper lateral to the upper so this is slightly lateral so this lateral sulcus is lateral to the upper lateral sulcus oh good statement so here you find if i have to keep this is a lower gum pad and this is the upper gum pad if i have two places one above the other and we are looking from the top for example i'm looking from the top our upper one this is the upper gum pad it will cover the inner gum pad completely so we have a complete over jet all around we have a complete over jet all around and if you look from lateral view if i have to look from the lateral view it would look something like this so in the anterior region we have a opening we have a opening opening in the sense that the the, the arches here are kind of separate so this help in sucking or i would i should say suckling because there is a difference between sucking and suckling suckling is the process you know normal process by which the child takes in milk so it involves muscular activities as well while sucking it is just you know creating pressure here you create pressure but the muscles are not really involved in suckling the pressure is also created but the muscles are also involved and this is you know a better way of feeding because if the child is suckling and that that's what what happens in breastfeeding the child suckles or i don't know if it's correct grammatically correct so if it's suckling means it is beneficial for him now we have some more terms like the natal teeth and the neonatal teeth neonatal teeth so the natal teeth these are the teeth that are present at the time of birth present at the time of birth so you have a baby born at your house or at your relative's house and he open his mouth and see and you find oh my god he has a teeth already and that is called a natal teeth okay and in the new natal teeth what happens is uh, the teeth is not present at the time of birth the teeth develops the teeth erupts within within a month after birth So normally we learned that the normal eruption was around 6 months but here in neonatal teeth it develops in just a month okay so you know these are mostly located in the mandibular incisor region and they have a familial tendency so these have a familial tendency familial tendency it means that you know it runs in families okay okay so here we end our pre dental period so in the pre dental period we learned that in this the teeth has not erupted yet and it starts at birth and ends around 6 months of age or even in some people some children 9 months of age when the mandibular first central incisor erupts so this is the first tooth that erupts in the oral cavity okay now we also learned that how the gum pad looks okay the transverse groove and a special transverse groove which was the lateral groove and then we studied that it overlaps kind of you know complete over jet and then we studied that there is a opening and then we studied the difference between the suckling and the sucking okay now 
I'll move on to the deciduous dentition. So, deciduous dentition. Okay? So, I think I should cover it in the second part of the video. This video would get a little more longer. I don't want to make the video much longer than this. So, hope you like the video. 